Hallo YouTube! Welcome back to Foam and Lizards. Last time I showed you how I built a tarantula layer. This time I will walk you through the process on how I built this. So, this build took me over two weeks I guess. And I made a waterfall. What begins at the right, over, over there. Uh, over there. And it goes all the way to there. It's a small pond. And then it goes down to another pond where the frogs can swim, if they ever swim. And I have a lump of wood over there. Some bromelias I added to the back wall. A hide. A ficus plant. Is it called a ficus? I don't know. It will cover the whole background at the end. And I have put a, a vein over here, so it can grow over there to, to the bottom and maybe grow here a bit. Well, we will see uh, how that will go. So, yeah, what I further ado, I will show you how I build it. Like every build, I work in stages. This one counted 10 of them. Design, styrofoam, expanding foam, grout, elastopur, but most people use black silicone, paint, epoxy resin, veins, testing and drying, and decoration. So, design. I realized I was one of the worst draftsmen ever, so I just sat before this terrarium for a long time. I had a lot of ideas, but most of them would never work. Finally, I came up with something and just started building. By the way, this exo terrarium is 24 by 18 by 24 inch. That's 60 by 45 by 60 centimeters. The thing I wanted for sure was a waterfall. I just didn't know how to do that yet. I decided I would let it start at the top right and make a stream to the left bottom. So first things first. I needed the space to put the water pump in and had to make sure I could reach it once the vivarium was finished. I measured the terrarium and after that I carved out two long pieces of styrofoam. I added a plate for the back but in the end I didn't have to do this for it was just a waste of space. This was a good lesson for the next time. I made a circle where the waterfall would start and cut it out with my fingers until it was big enough for the tube to fit through. I glued the pieces together with some non-toxic glue. Gladly I put it in my terrarium first before gluing it to the glass because I made a very dumb mistake. I glued them together the wrong way. Yeah, these things happen, you know. So I made another hole and turned it around. I also glued in the back wall. I decided to forget about the mistake and began making the first plateau. I wanted a stream to the left corner where there would be a small pond. I drew the inside and the outside and cut it out with a hot wire foam cutter. After that, I scraped out the inside until I had a hole big enough for the water. I laid it on another piece of foam and drew the outside on it. At the front I made it a little bit bigger and decided how I wanted the waterfall to go. Again I used my fingers to carve it out. Next I glued them on top of each other and I did something what was totally useless. I used the glue to make it waterproof. But since I already would use grout and epoxy, the step was unnecessary. Once dry, I glued the pond in. The last part I wanted to do with styrofoam was the waterfall itself. I figured that if I used expanding foam it would never have the form that I had in mind. I just made 4 blocks of the same size, glued them 2 on 2 and drew the stream on it. I cut the width I wanted the stream to have and glued them in. Now the styrofoam part was done and after it dried I could do the first water test. While I did this I came to the conclusion that the pump was way too loud and even if I had it on the softest level too much water came out. I wanted a nice quiet little stream so unfortunately I had to order a new pump. Anyway, before I began with the expanding foam I sawed a piece of bark in half and decided where I wanted the plastic flower pots to go. Then I started foaming and laid the flower pots and bark inside. I let this dry for a day and this was what it looked like. Just one big white mess with the waterfall nowhere to be found. So I took a knife and started carving off big pieces of foam. I made sure the tube would fit again and even took out one of the plastic flower pots to save some space. 
Before I finished the expanding foam, I had to make sure the water on the bottom could reach the pond. Because I wanted poison dart frogs in the vivarium, I expect tadpoles in the future. So I cut tubes on the right size and glued some netting on it. After it dried, I used scissors to cut around it and laid it on the foam. I put layer upon layer until the pump and pond were closed in. I made sure the last part of the waterfall would be more like rocks and the water would not make a lot of noise. After that was done, I used the lighter to smooth out the waterfall. When I was satisfied with how it looked, I moved to the fourth stage, grouting. Before I started with the stage, I laid down some old newspapers for when I spilled some grout. I mixed it until it was watery enough to cover all the spots I wanted to reach. I used a big brush for the most parts, but at some point I changed to a smaller one. I found out that this brush did a better job than the bigger one. It took a lot more time, but I enjoyed doing it. For the second layer, I added some black paint. I wanted to make it more greyish, but I figured I used too much paint. You see me using this big brush again, but I stopped filming when I used the smaller one. Also, I used the brush even smaller for the sides, so I would touch the glass to the minimum. For the third layer, I made sure this time it would be grey. At the end, this is what it looked like. And now, it's time to bake a delicious caramel pie. No, 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 I'm not. My my girlfriend made me do this. I swear. Let, let's let's just move on to the next stage. Elastopur. This this stuff. You know the brown. Well, never mind. When I look on YouTube or other people do the step, almost everyone uses black silicone. I have searched for that stuff here in the Netherlands, but I can't seem to find it. Everyone here uses this stuff. Elastopur is a two component glue that when mixed is basically the same thing. But the big benefit is that roots can grow on them. The only downside is that it needs to be added to the background within 45 minutes because after that it dries up very fast. I have to add that after 7 days it is completely harmless for all plants and animals. I began with the left side. I made a mixture of dried cocoa husk and peat and threw it on. After pushing it in, I turned the terrarium around and tapped it on the side. After that, I continued with the back and worked my way through until I covered all the spots. When this was finished, I took out most of the peat and cocoa husk for the next project. I used the vacuum to clear the leftovers and left it to dry for a day. This is the elastopur after an hour and a half. You can see how it is completely dried up and unworkable. One tip, if you use this, put it in the refrigerator a day before. It adds 50 minutes of process duration. The next step was painting. In my last video I tried out something what was new to me. I got a sprinkler and mixed in some black paint and water. I sprayed it on the grout and made sure I did not cover everything. It gave a pretty awesome rock effect. This time I wanted to experiment some more. With this small brush I added some watery black paint to the deep cracks where the sprinkler did not reach. I also painted the sides where the elastopur and grout crossed. This is what it looked like after the first layer of paint. Because rocks are never black and grey, I added brown paint. I used the wash technique for most of the build. This way the paint would go into the cracks and mix itself between the other colors. As you can see, it gives the rocks a more filthy look, almost like dirt has fallen on it. When I figured there was too much brown, I just dipped the brush in some clean water and stroke over it to spread it out. In this shot you can see what the brown wash is doing. I painted the right side and left the left side untouched. I continued doing this until I was satisfied with how it looked. So, this is before and this is after.
I decided I wanted to add some green, like moss has grown on the rocks. I mixed this bright green with some black until I got this olive color. Again, I added some water and gave it a good wash. When that was finished, I started dry brushing with some gray. At this point, I got a new camera and had to figure out how it worked. So I am sorry that I don't have better shots than this. But the point of dry brushing was to highlight the edges and give it a more natural look. Anyway, this was how it looked after I was done painting. I really enjoyed the stage and will experiment further in the future. After I let the paint dry for two days, I started with the epoxy resin. The paint I used was non-toxic and acrylic and I didn't know for sure if I had to do this step. But I decided I wanted to make sure that the paint was sealed anyway. I measured what I needed on a scale and started mixing. After that, I put it away for a few minutes so most of the bubbles would disappear. Like this. When the potion was complete, I used it to cover all the paint. If you don't know what epoxy resin is, it's a two component glue that is used a lot in vivariums, paludariums and aquariums. When completely dry, it's non-toxic and waterproof. But again, after an hour or so, it dries and becomes unworkable. It also makes everything I touch shiny and will take away much of the detail. That's the big downside of it. I have to add that I made a mistake within the stage. I added just one layer so the paint was sealed, but if you want to make it waterproof, there's a minimum of three layers needed. My background is leaking, but I hope it doesn't matter that much. I will put moss over there so it will stay wet all the time and grow on the background. So, while the epoxy was drying, I started to make some fake things. This was the most messy part of the build, but I like messy, so it didn't matter that much. I cut some rope the size I wanted and laid them on some old newspapers. I covered it with non-toxic glue and smeared it all over. I threw them in the dry peat and pushed the peat in. It gave some pretty awesome effect. I let them dry for 3 days and decided where I wanted them to go. I wanted two of them at the left side of the vivarium to create some extra depth. I laid the next one over the pond because I wanted to let plants grow over it. I didn't know if this was going to work, but the future will tell I guess. In the meantime, the new pump I ordered had arrived. First I let it dry for another week and finally I could do the second water test. And here you see how I made a big mistake. Remember how I created tubes with netting so the water could reach the pump? Well, it seemed I did not pay much attention while grouting and painting. The tubes were jammed for the most part and the pond flooded. This was a problem that had to be dealt with. I removed the netting from the tubes but there was no way I could glue them on again. I figured this was a good lesson for the next build. When I was all cried out, I gave the whole vivarium a good spray. I changed the water every day for another week and sprayed it two times a day. And then the wait was over. The last and most fun part of the build had arrived. I could now decorate the vivarium. First I put in some clean clay balls for the drainage layer. Next I added some fresh water. I bought some aquarium sand for the two ponds but I'm not really sure if I keep it this way. It just doesn't feel natural yet. I cut some netting on the right size and laid it on top of the clay balls. For the substrate, I used a mixture of extra terra eco earth, a fertilized sand, charcoal, sphagnum moss and leaf leather. I then added a lump of wood and figured where I wanted it to go. I decided to make some sort of plateau in the back for some extra depth. Then came the cleanup crew. Here you see me add some springtails and isopods. 
I added the last of the substrate and started with the plants. Unfortunately, I did not film this part for I could not reach the right corner with the camera. I did what I do best in life, standing in the way. But yeah, eventually it became this. Like I said, the plants still need to grow and I think I add some more. The ficus in the back needs to cover the whole background but I don't know how long this will take. Now I will wait a month and a half before adding some frogs. And we're done! So, I hope you guys learned something today. I had a lot of fun doing this project. If you like this video, do give this a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for some more videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye! So, I hope you guys learned something today. I had a lot of... Nope. So, I hope you guys learned something today. I had a lot of... Nope.